once again, Hendrick Motorsports dominates on the low downforce package at Richmond but it was a bit tricky on the way. In typical Richmond fashion, like what we saw last year, there were a lot of comers and goers, but the main theme was going to be who can stop Hendrick Motorsports, and for a while it was who could stop William Byron. I mean, right where they left off from Phoenix the last time we had this package, I mean, you had William Byron and Kyle Larson battling for the lead, even though you had Kyle Busch and Alex Bowman out in front. Byron took the lead right after and just didn't look back. He'd go on to win stage one, but right quickly, we knew very early on that this new downforce package made racing at Richmond so much better than it had been in years past. You saw a lot of drivers racing in different lanes, great battles, throughout the entire field, even though there wasn't many battles up front. There was still a lot of great action in the middle of the pack. Lots of drivers picking different lanes. We saw a lot of tire fall-offs, which was nice to see, so strategy came into play very early on. And you just see a lot of comers and goers, new contenders up, making their way towards the front, and drivers that were up front going backwards, like Kyle Busch. He was second and then fell out of the top 10 within a few laps. I mean, his car just wasn't meant to run well. It just wasn't a good car for him, which you have to understand, everybody was attacking this track for the first time ever with practice and qualifying rained out. But there was a moment that happened in stage one on lap 45. Denny Hamlin just took out JJ Yaley, just flat out dumped him, sent him into the wall. Um, I think the reason for this was that before, but prior to that, the start finish line, Hamlin was squeezed a little bit between a driver on the outside and Yaley on the inside, but it wasn't squeezed to the point where they made contact. It was just like a little moment, but I do find it very ironic for Hamlin to say that after the words that he said in the previous episode of Actions Detrimental when he called out drivers at Coda for being too aggressive and too reckless, and then goes and does this. Bit hypocritical, I, I gotta say. Now, stage two was the same thing. William Byron out in front. Kyle Larson was there, was the second best guy there, but couldn't challenge Byron, at least in stage one. Stage two, Larson started to come to life. He had a good battle with Ross Chastain for a little bit before he was able to get by him, then went over, chased down William Byron, and was able to pass him for the lead. So the five car took over. And again, like I said in stage one, lots of tire fall off, lots of comers and goers. Denny Hamlin had to start at the back due to speeding on pit road, I believe, had some sort of penalty. Drove up towards the front you also saw some new drivers like ryan priest having a really strong run we know that he's good at short tracks but still it's nice to see him have a really good run in this race here today was making his way up towards the front inside the top 10 even and of course when you get into a long green flag run expected at a place like richmond you're gonna have green flag pit stops and two drivers had mistakes ryan blaney had a penalty after leaving with equipment he had the wrench still on his car when he left pit road and kyle larson who comes out of pit road and then hits daniel Suarez with the right front of his car that would cause some pretty significant damage arrow wise again with this low downforce package the cars are even more sensitive now than ever, so that type of contact would hurt his performance later on in the race. That not only took his lead away, which was three seconds down to two tenths, Larson would fall from first to seventh by the end of the stage. And this is where Toyota comes in, because up to this point in time, it was all Chevrolet. Byron took the lead away from Larson near the end of that stage, but then you saw the GGR cars. Christopher Bell, Marchek Jr., and Denny Hamlin, who started at the back, made his way up towards the front, all were in a blanket in contention for the stage win. And Christopher Bell, the driver that I don't think a lot of people had their eyes on for having a factor in this race, was the one that ended up getting the stage win. He was able to catch up to Byron with help from lap traffic. Harrison Byrne did caused almost two moments <laughs> there near the end of the stage, but Bell was able to catch up to Byron and pass, but only for a little bit because then Denny Hamlin caught up to Bell and passed him for the lead and win stage two. And so when stage three began, the tide shifted. Stage one and the most part of stage two, it was Hendrick Motorsports, William Byron, Kai Larson. By stage three, the trend has shifted to Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota. For the final stage from the beginning of the restart to the final round of Green Flag Pit Stops was all Joe Gibbs Racing. Hamlin, Bell, and Truex, one, two, three, respectively. But then on the pit stop, Hamlin had a slow pit stop on the right front tire, it wasn't tightly secured. That caused him to lose so much ground. He would go from first to 12th. That gives the lead away to Martin Truex Jr., who also came to life near the end of stage number two, and he was in prime position to win the race. And then we would have a caution. 94 laps ago, Noah Gregson gets sideways and turns one and two, smacks the wall, comes up in a water smoke, brings out the caution. But after they pit, they still had one more green flag pit stop left to go. In the final round of pit stops, William Byron, who was second to Truex, 
pitted two laps earlier than Truex and was able to leapfrog Truex and take the lead away through pit stops. But Truex had the fastest car. While Byron did have a bit of a lead, Truex was able to just eat that lead away, was able to catch up to Byron, and the two had a real good side-by-side -side battle, and they were side-by-side -side until the next caution comes out. Tyler Reddick just got loose sideways underneath Kevin Harvick in one and two spins, bring out the caution. They come down for pit stops. What was interesting about this one is that at this point in time, Truex is screwed because he had at this point in time when they were going through the final round of pit stops, he had zero fresh tires. They had to use scuffs for the final 25 laps thing. So even though Truex was, I think, fourth or fifth at the restart, he was screwed. But up front, another contender, that was Josh Berry. Now, Berry stayed out a lot longer in that final green flag round of pit stops, banking on the caution, and he got just that, as well as Michael McDowell. So coming to the restart, you had the front row, Hendrick Motorsports, Kyle Larson, and Josh Berry. On the restart, entering turns one and two, Bell either locks up the brakes or just moves up, but makes contact with William Byron, sending him sideways and backs it into the wall, ending Byron's chances of winning this race. Byron had led 117 laps up to this point in time. And what's interesting about this one is that five of the last of six of Byron's wins, had he had led over 100 some odd laps, he's won. The only race where he led over 100 laps that didn't win was Richmond last year. And the same thing happened today. Had basically the fastest car or one of the fastest cars led the most laps ends up not getting the victory. The restart again with 15 laps to go side by side, clean start entering one and two, but Larson on the inside lane gets the advantage and gets the lead off of turn number two and says bye bye to the field and to Josh Berry. Larson goes on to win at Richmond for his 20th career cup series victory, his first win since Homestead last November and his first win of 2023. It was a great recovery for the five team after they had that issue on pit road and had one of the fastest cars and was able to capitalize on that final round of green flag pit stops to make it to the end and to edge out his teammate Josh Berry. Here's a look at the rest of the results. So Hendrick Motorsports 1-2. I saw something on Twitter. Uh, I forgot who it was, but I think it said if Hendrick Motorsports wins that they they should say uh, Virginia is for louvers. Now, usually the motto is Virginia's for lovers or something along those lines. Well, because of the controversy with Hendrick Motorsports, someone said they sh Hendrick Motorsports should go Virginia is for louvers as a way to kind of mock the field for them winning their appeal. But yeah, Hendrick Motorsports comes home one and two. Ross Chastain, a very quiet third place finish here. Wasn't really a factor for the race lead, but was just always inside the top five. Christopher Bell and Kevin Harvick. Harvick still once again carrying SHR on his back. Matt needs to go to a hospital for the amount of times he's had to carry this team. Michael McDowell, like I said, he was able to capitalize on the final round of green flag pit stops, staying out longer than normal. Comes home sixth place. Excellent job for him. Joe Logano, quite seventh place finish for him. Alex Bowman, rookie Ty Gibbs, nice run for him. And Brad Kozlowski in the tenth, in the tenth position. Trex leaving out on scuffs. He goes from third to eleventh place. Chase Briscoe in twelve. His teammate Eric Amarola thirteenth. Kyle Busch is shocking fourteenth place for him. And Ty Gill in the top fifteen. Reddick rebounds for 16th place. Chandler Smith in his first cup start at Richmond in 17th. Ryan Priest, Harrison Byrne, and Denny Hamlin. Now, Denny Hamlin on the final round of pit stops after that Tyler Reddick spin was caught speeding. So he went from having a shot at winning the race to 20th place. 21st is Corey LaJoy, 22nd, Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace had a strong run going, was in the top 10 until he had an issue on pit road where some random dude comes over to try and uh, to get the tire, ends up going over the wall. That's a safe violations so he had to come and serve that and that was basically all she wrote Bubba could not recover from that Daniel Suarez William Byron Austin Dillon Ryan Blaney had a rough day today he even made contact with Josh Berry sending him around early in the race AJ Allmendinger Austin Sindrick Justin Haley and Chris Busher rounds out the top 30 and then we'll look at the rest of the field Eric Jones Ty Dillon Anthony Alfredo Cody Ware Ricky Sanders Jr. had I believe a fuel leak or an oil leak Early in the race after he smacked the wall, so he fin finishes 35th. J.J. Yaley and Noah Gregson rounds out the field. So, overall, my thoughts on this race, I mean, nothing much else to say here except it was a really good Richmond race. I feel like Richmond, before Richmond was always like a very action-packed track, especially in the late 90s or 2000s. It was always known for action, being and banging, but it's now shifted to a strategic track. If 
you love the strategy of stock car racing, if you love like the different tire combinations and fuel, if you're interested into that, then Richmond is your bread and butter. Richmond is your best, is your favorite racetrack if you love strategy in racing, uh, because this track optimizes that to the max. I mean, we saw a lot of drivers in different strategies, some staying out longer than normal to try and get an advantage on the competition. Um, it was very entertaining, entertaining from a strategic perspective, but even also from a racing perspective, it was actually pretty good. Last year, Lack of racing was made up by the strategy, but this year it had good racing. We saw a lot of good side-by-side, through-eye battles. The ba- uh, the restarts were always action-packed, very entertaining. But even the battles up front, you know, we had that battle with Byron and Truex. You had that battle, ba- uh, that battle near the end of stage number two with Hamlin, the JGR cars, and Byron and Larson. So we had some really good battles. Overall, this was a solid race. I give this seven and a half, eight out of ten. I think for Richmond Sanders, I thought this was a very Solid, very good race. I really enjoy that. Jeez, even even with the the controversy of last of the few weeks ago with the Hood Lovers and Phoenix, they still won. And now this, they win again. Josh Berry gets his first top five finish, second place, oh so close from getting his first cup victory. Um, it, nothing surprised me from this race. I think we all knew that Chevrolet would be very fast here based on what we saw at Phoenix with the low downforce package. We knew Chevrolet would be fast and we knew that more than likely Ford would struggle. Uh, now, to be fair, they did have four Fords in the top 10. You had uh, Harvick, Keselowski, uh, Logano, and McDowell. So they were there. They were a lot better than they were at Phoenix, but still, you could tell there was a clear difference between how Chevrolet and Toyota performed compared to how Ford performed, where Ford was there. But Chevrolet and Toyota actually did come to play, even though Toyota didn't get uh, end up getting the best finish. The highest was uh, they only had two drivers in the top 10, but still they put a strong performance. We all knew Chevrolet would be strong, would be probably dominate this race. But I will give credit to Toyota and to JGR. They put up a fight to, to Larson and Byron, and they actually made a good portion of that race very entertaining to see who would get the advantage. Would it be Hendrick Motorsports? Would it be JGR? That stink between the final half of stage two and the early part of stage three, those were very entertaining to see from a storyline perspective. So overall, I enjoyed this race. I thought it was really good for Richmond standards. Um, I still, though, I just got to say to end this off, Texas and IndyCar. Wow. I didn't see all of it because I was sleeping because I stayed up for the uh, Australian Grand Prix, which was a joke as typical from the FIA. It was an absolute joke, but absolute incredible performance from what I saw from the IndyCar series at Texas. So I got to say Texas, number one, Richmond, number two, and then F1. Actually, F1 is down here, number three, because that ending was atrocious. But yeah, what are your thoughts on this race? Did you like it? Did you not? Tell me in the comment section down below. Until next time, my name is Jed from MDK. Thank y'all so much for watching. Congratulations to Kyle Larson, your winner at Richmond. <laughs>